Do I what? No, I don't go to a bank or go inside of a bank. You do everything from the machine outside the uh, the ATM. You deposit, withdraw. I mean, what are you depositing? Checks. Someone wrote you a check? Sure, it's not a bill. Yeah, I mean, I guess you can use a check there. Steve Weiner here from GetRubix.com, and today we're going to start assembling our package for the V2 of the migration. Uh, we are going to take a close look at something a lot of folks gave me feedback they had trouble with, which is the bulk primary refresh token. So we're going to do a little refresher. It's kind of a pun. Fresher. Anyway, um, and we'll take a look at both ways to do that. Uh, so stick around. Who even uses a check anymore? Okay, so there are two ways to get the bulk primary refresh token, which is needed to complete the migration process. Um, so I'm going to split this into two parts, and I'm going to go over again the first way to do it, and then, of course, the second way. Um, so let's start. The first thing you need is the Windows Configuration Designer. You get that from the Microsoft Store here. Um, so we're going to search for, it looks like I already did, Windows Configuration Designer, and you should see it. And you just download it right here, which I already have. And we're going to go ahead and open that up. Let's take a look at what we got here. Okay, so you're going to want to click on Provision Desktop Devices. Okay, and we'll call this V2. So it's very important we don't do a lot here. Right, so I want, the one thing we need is we need to set a name for the device um, that we want this to, basically the same thing as like autopilot. So when the device enters 10B, this is the name it will adopt. Well, I want to keep the M365 dash serial variable. Oop. You can do random or serial, or you can just set a static name. You're going to want to keep that dynamic and keep it simple. We're not touching any other options here. I can't make that clear enough. We're going to hit next. We're going to turn off the Wi-Fi piece here. We're not injecting any kind of wireless network. It's not necessary. We're going to hit next again. This is the part that matters. Make sure you click Enroll in Azure Active Directory. Click Yes to refresh AUD credentials. And then click Get Bulk Token. This is where it's going to have you authenticate to your tenant. I recommend doing this as a GA. Um, uh, I can't type today. Uh, Rubixdev.com. As you can see, it's taking me to my authentication. Go ahead and just say no. Sign into this app only. Now, it, to me, it said bulk token fetch successfully. If it does not say that for you, we're going to go to the entra.microsoft.com portal, formerly Azure AD, and we want to go to Applications and Enterprise Applications. And you're going to want to look, because now you're going to have an entry in here. Let me make this bigger here. You're going to have a new entry for the Windows Configuration Designer. Okay, you may have to click on permissions and you're going to see everything it's requesting. You're going to have to click grant and to grant again, make sure you're doing this as a GA permission requested review for your organization. So see all this here. I did not get prompted for this when I signed in. I think this is tripping a lot of folks up. So go ahead and click accept. And now I get the notification that uh, consent has been granted. If that's the case and you have that, go back and try to try again to, to refresh the token and you should get it without a problem. Um, you will also see that token appear as a user in the tenant. And I've done this a few times, so mine's gonna look a little saturated, but oh, looks like I've gotten rid of it. So take a look at this um, package. I'm gonna click on this. Created date and time. So this is today. This is the service principle that was basically just created. So it will put this in your tenant. So also make sure you have this here. You don't have to do anything with this. You just have to have this, uh, make sure it showed up. 
Okay, you can go ahead and add a uh, an admin if you'd like. A local admin is good for when the device is between tenants. If we need a way in, if something goes wrong, migration admin. Call this whatever you want. I'm going to go ahead and just set that. That's optional. And then that's it. You literally click next till you get to the very end and create. And it tells you where the package was created. A lot of, a lot of things here that come with it. All you need is the .ppkg file. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to copy it. Um, and I am going to put this in my, my V2. I'm going to place this in the files because this is something else I'm going to. Um, this is something else I'm going to uh, put in blob storage and pull back down. So I'm actually going to rename mine to migrate since that's what I call it in all the scripts. But obviously, if you want this to be a different name, you're going to have to just go redo all the, the start migrate PS1 script where we call it. I recommend keeping it the same. I, it doesn't matter what this is called. I want to go back for one second though and just show you what this is doing because I have been asked about this. So this is the package folder that the program created. And if we want to see what's actually going on, you can open customizations.xml. I'm going to open it with Visual Studio Code. Okay. So there are a few things going on in here. You can see the settings we configured here. Um, the most important is this BPRT. This is the bulk primary refresh token. So this is the authentication token that allows the device to be placed in the new tenant, right? Without user interaction, right? So if we have an issue generating this, that's why we look to an alternate means to go ahead and do it. Um, but that's really what, that's really what we're after here. Okay. If I go back over to the start migrate ps1 script okay real quick just going back to the start migrate ps1 to kind of put this all together again this will be in blob storage so the file will come down right the the ppkg and then towards the bottom uh, let's just scroll faster here so towards the bottom when we get to join new tenant that's what we're running install provisioning package package path local path migrate.ppkg or whatever you call it but you would want to change the name here so ppkg hopefully that sheds some light on the first part again it's pretty straightforward i think the most common issue you're going to run into is the permissions um, but if for some reason that tool will not work Tomorrow, I will deep dive into the second method for you, which is going to be getting that bulk primary refresh token itself and injecting that into our own um, our own provisioning package through its own XML. So we will talk then.